What's going on guys, Jake here from The Fly Fiend. Thanks for tuning back in to another fly tying tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to tie a simple egg pattern three different ways. Steelhead season is just around the corner. I've been tying up a lot of eggs for the spring run. I'm gonna throw a fresh hook in the vise and we'll get right into this tutorial. So the hook I have in the vise right now is a size 14 barbless jig hook. This is my preferred size I like to tie my egg patterns on. I have that paired up with a three millimeter slotted tungsten bead in silver. And the thread we're gonna be using is UTC 70 denier in fluorescent fire orange. So I'm just gonna start my thread right behind that bead, building up a little dam, securing that bead in place so it doesn't rattle around. The only material we're gonna be using on this is a uh, fly box, egg stassi material. This is a new newer material. Um, I used to tie a lot of glow bugs, and no matter how many I tied, I did not enjoy tying them, so I kind of got out of that. I'd actually um, fish beads for a little bit on a dropper system. I didn't really enjoy that either, so I kind of actually stayed away from egg patterns for um, a few seasons, and uh, I kind of regret it, and um, just because they catch so many fish. So I came across this uh, material, and um, it's definitely game changing for um, any type of egg pattern flies or um, like egg sucking leeches or anything like that. Uh, it's definitely, definitely really cool stuff. So it's super easy to actually use. Um, it comes on a strand, kind of like chenille almost. So what I did is just stripped a little bit of the fibers there, you can see they're almost on a rope like um, chenille would be, twisted into a rope. And I just kind of pulled back some of those. And you don't need to dress much of this hook, like that right there will um, do the whole volume of the hook with the uh, fiber. So I'm just going to tie this down nice and tight, right in that rope area. Now I'm just going to pull that right up to vertical and as you would like a soft hackle or anything like that you kind of just pull the fibers back and you can tell that they they want to go to the one side um, when you're holding this material in your hand you can see um, where what side it wants to come out um, it helps if you put a little bit of water on it um, but I think just doing it like this just works um, just as well but if you do have a little bit of trouble just put a little bit of water in your fingers and uh, you can really preen that back with uh, some water. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw in about two and a half wraps. Then once I pull my material up, you just wanna capture that. Try to come right through the fibers and not on an angle, because if you come on an angle, you're gonna trap a lot. Um, if you kind of pull that straight up, then go through straight you're not gonna trap, trap as many fibers. So this is your um, kind of just go-to easy egg, just like so. Now you can just throw in a whip finish. Cut out your thread. And you're good to fish. So this, this color was um, fluorescent cheese. Um, definitely one of my favorite colors. Super simple. This is method one. I'm gonna throw another fresh hook in the vise and show you another way to tie it. The second method I'm gonna show you on how to tie this egg is similar to Devin Olson's pattern. Um, he ties it on a jig hook. I'm tying this more on, on a natural egg hook. I have a Firehole Sticks 317 um, in a size 14. And I have that paired up with a 2.5 millimeter um, gold tungsten bead. I go a little bit smaller on these because I want to keep this hook gap as big as possible. And with the three, I just think that it sits a little bit too low for my liking. So I stick with a 2.5. Uh, it gives me a little bit um, reinsurance when I'm hooking those bigger steelhead that I know that I have a, still a decent um, gap. So I'm gonna start my thread right in front of that bead. I'm gonna dress the hook a little bit. 
I'm just going to pull this bead up, come underneath it, make a couple wraps behind it. I'm just going to make a couple figure eight wraps there, just securing that bead to the hook shank. I'm going to be grabbing some fluorescent peach. I'm just going to strip that off the stem again. Just tie that in nice and tight. It's like so. I'm going to pull that material up. Just use my fingers. Pull that back so it's laying rearward. You don't want to go over top. You just want to go right in front of each wrap. So here I'm going to make about three, two and a half, three wraps. I can come in with my thread, capture it while keeping tension on my thread. I can come in front and put some wraps down. So I'm just going to pull that all back, throw in some thread wraps. Then I can grab my whip finish and throw in the remainder four or five turn whip finish. So this is more of a natural egg presentation. Um, you don't have a bead sticking out. And um, that bead actually helps with keeping that material propped up. So it'll actually hold it, uh, an egg um, shape. Um, while it's wet. I've actually kind of used um, golf resin, the uh, fluorescent um, red. I've actually put a little hot spot in there before. Um, when this gets a little wet, you can see through it. Um, not so much that I would do it on all the flies, but I was just kind of experimenting and um, it does it does come through a bit, but uh, not too much. So I'm gonna throw another hook in the in the vise and we'll get into the last method that I tie this pattern. So last method I'd like to use on tying these flies is on a jig hook again, size 14. Have that paired up with a um, orange three millimeter slotted tungsten bead. Doesn't really matter about the color of the bead. Um, I just like the orange just to add it a little bit more um, contrast into it if the water's a little bit dirtier. Uh, you can also use a pink bead that's uh, totally your choice. The thread we're gonna be using is the same, that orange. Throw in a little thread dam there, just like so. Now this one, I'm gonna be mixing two, co uh, two colors. So I'm gonna be using the fluorescent cheese and the salmon roe. I like this because it kind of adds just a, almost like a marble marble look to it and uh, you get a different color from each angle. So I'm going to prep both of these colors just like so. So you can kind of see that I have this, um, the, uh, those stems kind of exposed. I'm just going to crank those in. You definitely want to make sure you get that rope in there because if not, you're going to be pulling that whole thing out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull one of these colors up first and do my pull back of all the fibers. I'm going to get the second one up, kind of see where the fibers want to lay, just like so. I'm going to pull them together and do it together. So if you are having trouble, um, water here definitely helps. Um, but if you just keep doing it with your fingers, it will it will lay back just like so. So now I'm just going to take two full wraps here. over with my thread 
anchor that down. Take a couple thread wraps in the front. I can cut out that extra. And you can kind of just like trim up any of those long pieces that come off. So you can change up a lot of the colors. Um, I have only three colors with me because that's all I had at my local shop. And so I just grabbed the most uh, common and natural colors that uh, you fish eggs. So you can get totally creative with this, uh, change out um, whatever colors you like. It's like so. So I have a little bit of water here, and I'm just gonna get this a little bit wet so you can actually see the um, how translucent it gets when it's in the water. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in at a time here. So there you kind of get an idea of what it looks like when it's wet. It'll obviously be a little bit better when it's underwater and it holds a little bit more water, but it looks really good stuff. I'm really excited to fish these in a couple weeks here. I've just been filling my boxes up with them and um, super excited to try them out. They look really, really, really good. Hope you liked today's tutorial guys. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the fly or any of the materials or any of the methods that I use tying this egg pattern, you can leave that down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. If you want to check out these materials, you can buy them at theflyfiend.com. Thanks a lot again for watching guys, and we'll catch you in the next tutorial.